All right. Fantastic. Over to you, well, Tom. Thank uh, you. Yeah, thank you, Art Kraken. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, it's a pleasure to, to talk to you today. Um, and uh, Luciana's just asked me to talk briefly about myself uh, and then a little bit about farmer time. And um, I'm, I'm only too delighted to do that because it's been something that's been uh, a really exciting adventure and I think is absolutely full of potential. Um, I'm going to try and share my screen uh, to give you uh, some visuals. So um, let me... Um, Host disabled attendee screen sharing. Oh, I'm now the co-host. Fantastic. Okay, thanks, Lucy. Let me just try and share that screen. Right. Um, so you should now be able to see my presentation here. Okay, I've got a couple of nods. That's fantastic. So I will. Um, I'll take you through. Um, the, the slideshow and I would say yeah you know um, if you've got any questions please feel free to to uh, to tap them in the chat I'll try and spot them uh, and otherwise we'll pick them up at the end um, but equally do connect with uh, with me on social media or with or with Luciano at PIFA um, uh, if you've got any further questions or or, or are interested in uh, any further information um, uh, so I've had not a, not a very typical route into farming farming is actually the fourth career the fourth um, thing I've worked in and, um, uh, and so it's taken me uh, a little bit of a funny route into farming life but I think it's given me um, a little bit of preparation for kind of some different things uh, that we you know different um, things that we're, we're, we're faced with today and perhaps some different tools to, uh, to deal with them so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, and I hope the chat will, will pick up on how we use technology um, to communicate um, uh, the, the I guess the messages of farming but 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 more than the messages to kind of just just share information uh, I think that's the that's the real benefit of um, uh, of the technology that we have nowadays um, so that's me on the left uh, I was born on a family farm uh, that's my little brother on the right uh, he's bigger than me now um, so uh, so I always share this picture because uh, he was smaller than me once um, so I was brought up on the family farm uh, and my view actually increasingly in life, I, I did once think that um, to be English, you have to be truly eccentric. And I was trying to be eccentric for the first part of my life. And I realized then you can't just, you can't try to become eccentric. You, it, you just let it happen to you. Um, so that's my father on the right, uh, who's, who's not, who is quite eccentric in some ways, but uh, is relatively straight down the line, uh, small C conservative. Um, and that's me on, on the left on our Christmas Day walk. And, and I, be, I really believe that, that we are not here to make up the numbers, uh, that actually, um, you know, it's, it's our role to get involved in, uh, in, in anything and everything, to take an interest in the world around us uh, and to share that interest and that passion with others. So um, I hope I've been doing that. Um, my, I, I, didn't, um, I haven't always walked, worked on a farm. I'm quite a... Um, uh, I've been described myself as a toddler farmer recently because I've only been a farmer for four years. And before that, I worked in um, briefly in business consultancy, then in news and magazines, and, and then in um, in film for ten years. Um, not very uh, not very interesting parts of film. I didn't make the film. I didn't meet a lot of famous people. I, I initially sold home entertainment, um, so I sold DVD and Blu-ray. I sold actually VHS when I first started. Uh, um, uh, and uh, but then in later years I knew I wanted to come back to the family farm and so I spoke to my first uh, my first boss in the film industry I used to work for Universal Pictures and I said I've got a few jobs I could do within the company before I leave what do you think I should do and he said we can't teach you anything about farming but there are a couple of jobs that will help you with negotiation communication relationship building uh, and uh, and you'll get a bit of international travel so I ended up selling film rights across the world um, which was great fun, but um, but actually, I, I think beyond you know, um, occasionally meeting someone famous or well bothering someone famous probably, um, and uh, uh, you know and going to the odd party. I think um, for me the experience just just gave me loads of extra. Well, gave me confidence, communication, all you know, all those all those what I think we would term soft skills, but are actually really really important. So um, yeah, that was that was great fun. Um, but I knew particularly that, that I really wanted to come back to my love, um, and that's the farm. <laughs> I, I got married to my wife, Lisa, uh, five years ago on the farm um, as, I, as, I, as I made my return, uh, and we moved back from London together. Um, so I do, I do jest that the farm is my love, um, 
uh, and she 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 rides that very well indeed. Um, uh, so, uh, but I, the farm is sometimes my mistress, um, and we and we uh, she comes from a non-farming family, so we've had some great conversations about the fact that there are certain times of the year uh, when because uh, we're a very very seasonal industry as you as you as you know or would imagine um, when the farm does take up quite a bit of time but um i try to um i try to even that out the rest of the year um most of you want to know perhaps where we where we farm and i put a little dot there we're just west of peterborough about 100 k's north of london um those of you with a keen farming interest will probably want to know the geology uh and we're on some kind of jurassic base rock or something uh, but really, with a, with a farming interest, you'll want to know the kind of soil we're on. And we're on a very heavy clay soil, which means that we retain moisture um, uh, to our detriment sometimes. And, uh, uh, and sometimes it's a positive. Um, here we are. Now, if you're in certain parts of Australia, you, you won't think that, um, that two feet of rain a year is dry. But we are in the dry part of the British Isles. Um, just over two feet of rain a year uh, on average. Uh, and for a maritime climate as we are, uh, where we expect to be uh, warm in the winter and cool in the summer and plenty of moisture, um, we, we do sometimes struggle with, with dryness, but um, that will definitely um, uh, get a rise out of, you, of the Australians because I know that you farm are on a lot, lot less water than that in, in many cases. Um, so there are winter temperatures about four degrees Celsius. Uh, on average, um, we do get snow and, and, and quite a few frosts. Uh, this year was a bit of an exception. We had uh, six frosts this year. Three were in January and three were in the end of May, uh, which is really supposedly our summertime. Uh, and our summer temperatures, we probably average 16 to 17 degrees Celsius. And we think it gets hot when it gets to 30 degrees Celsius, which is about high 70s Fahrenheit. Um, my in-laws in the middle of America just laugh at that because <laughs> that's a spring day for them. but. For us, it's a, it's a little bit warm. Um, and really, I wanted to, um, of all the self-help books that I've never read, uh, there's one called Ready, Fire, Aim. And, and this one, I think, for me, probably uh, symbolises, I suppose, how, how I act, perhaps what I believe in. Uh, uh, it, it, and, and actually, it, it tries to counteract that analysis that we can get by trying to over-prepare for things. Uh, and it says really get yourself ready, go for it, and then make your tweaks and your adjustments as you go along. Um, and that's something I've really tried to do. Uh, and another thing that's really stuck with me, a, a, an old schoolmate of mine said to me, he said, Tom, we can't, we can't, we make, we can't make ourselves live a, a, another day. We don't get to influence that, but we can make our life seem longer. And he said, have you ever noticed when you're busy doing lots of different things, you feel like, gosh, you know, at the time I've, I've uh, I, you know, it feels like there's so much life uh, in your life. Um, he said it makes you it makes your life seem longer when you're involved in different things, and and so I very much try to do that as well. Um, um, put myself out of my comfort zone. Um, in the last year, uh, in the last twelve months, probably twelve to eighteen months, um, I've given speeches on um, public speaking, which is the most terrifying subject to speak on because you're being judged uh, as you speak. Um, I've coached people on social media skills on, on some of the farming leadership courses here in the UK. Um, I, I've no, tra no formal training in either of those, um, but just a little bit of experience. Um, yesterday, we streamed live to 350 schools across the UK as part of the Great Science Share um, and answered some of their questions. Um, I gave a public lecture on, on food and climate change just before Christmas uh, and no one left. Uh, and I gave a lecture at Lincoln University, uh, which was great fun. Um, but very, very much again, uh, outside my comfort zone. So I really believe in that. And if any of you are thinking of starting something uh, extraordinary or, or doing something that might make you feel a bit uncomfortable, I would very much welcome that. Um, I also facilitate a support group called Restored Lives for people recovering from divorce and separation. And we've recently gone online with that. So that's a whole new set of skills as well, which is, which is, which is great fun. Uh, and talking of online, we, every year in the UK, we have Open Farm Sunday, uh, where about 400 farms uh, open their gates, uh, welcome visitors on board uh, and give them a tour around. And we did that. That was online this year. Um, there is a recording of that. So uh, I took the, the tea time slot. I think that's the premium slot. Um, I took the tea time slot, which was 5, five till 6 p.m. Uh, a couple of Sundays ago and gave people a tour of, tour of the farm, answered questions through, um, uh, uh, through Facebook Live. Uh, and I'm 
I'm really passionate about food farming and rural life. I think, um, uh, I think as a, uh, really as a populace now, we are probably, we've never been further away. Uh, we've never been more divorced from where our food comes from, and yet we've probably been never been more interested. Uh, and so my passion is really helping people to see what happens on the other side of the farm gate. Um, and, and one of those forms uh, has been farmer time. Um, and, uh, and so just, just briefly to give you the story of that, uh, for, for I try and give you, it'll be a bit longer than my elevator pitch, but maybe a 10 to 15 minute rundown of where we've got uh, and how we, how we got here. Um, uh, uh, that will probably be a good thing to do and then we'll, we'll, we'll perhaps have a bit of a discussion about that. Um, so really the, the, the background was that our schools, uh, you know, and as I said, we've never been more divorced from food uh, and yet we've never been more interested in it. And that is reflected across the developing, developed world really. Um, uh, and I've, I've um, uh, you know, I've experienced that in, in a number of countries as, as farmer time uh, grows. Um, so really our schools, we're, I mean, we think as farmers, we're pretty pressured for time, but then you meet teachers uh, and they have a, a, a huge time demands uh, and very little spare time. They've got to make sure that everything they do in the classroom uh, is, is, is incredibly efficient and, and hits those curriculum demands. Uh, budgets are being slashed all over the place. Uh, and teachers, uh, you know, try to, try to know a bit about everything, but uh, frankly, it, you, you can't be an expert on, on absolutely everything. Um, so there may not be quite so much teacher knowledge. Um, again, as a populace, we become more divorced from, from the land. Um, class sizes here in the UK are pretty large um, and student confidence uh, is, is, is incredibly varying. Um, I will touch back on that um, a bit later on. Um, and there's a lot of planning required um, uh, from health and safety through to, you know, risk assessments uh, and, uh, and curriculum impacts. Uh, and from farms, you know, we, we're, we're incredibly seasonal. We keep changing. You can't just do a snapshot. It was great to open our gates uh, virtually a couple of Sundays ago, but that was one day and the farm has already changed since then and in another 10 days it'll be it'll be different again we're, we're a real, real visual business so um, it's very difficult to um, uh, to describe you've really got to see um, and our operations are extensive I mean we think they're extensive here in the UK when we think a big farm is over a thousand acres you guys you're seriously extensive when you're talking about paddocks that are a thousand acres um, and we have variable weather you know you bring a you bring a group of children out to the farm it's fantastic um, but the the, uh, the weather here can change um, very quickly. There there is a saying in the UK: if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. Um, and uh, and that all too often is true. Um, farmers have uh, very often have no education in uh, no training in education, uh, and we can be inflexible at times. Uh, sometimes, as I say, um, everything, including uh, my wife, is on hold, and we have to go out and get certain jobs done. Um, uh, and not to mention the fact that it's it's uh, it's potentially incredibly hazardous. Um, uh, one of my one of my real fears and concerns is 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 people coming onto the farm uh, and hurting themselves or or doing themselves a, a, a mischief. So um, so so we have to be careful about that. And the groups the group, school which we brought out in the past, um, it's really easy to be distracted. There are so many things going on in the farm in the countryside that um, that actually um, really focus and concentration can be uh, can be difficult now of course I think the answer to all of that is is, is farmer time and we've been running now for um, gosh I think we're in our fourth year and farmer time really was a project born out of that kind of realization uh, that we we've got a lot of technology in, in our pockets uh, and in our everyday lives we're starting to use that technology I mean it's, it's we're not we're saturated in technology we should be using to to answer this question uh, and bring people closer to to, to their food uh, when i present on uh, on farmer time i typically walk up to the front of the audience i ask everybody if you have a smartphone in your pocket will you take it out and hold it up in the air that is nearly everybody i think there are i mean i think the ones who don't take their smartphone out uh, they're not the ones who don't have one they're generally ones who just who just are awkward so and so's and don't want to do it uh, so I get a nearly nearly a room full of uh, arms and hands holding up their uh, their smartphone. And my second question is: um, Keep your hand up if you've ever made a a, a video call, be that FaceTime, uh, you know, be that Skype, uh, Zoom, whatever that might be. And and most hands are still up in the air at that time. You know, we perhaps think uh, the older generations are perhaps they're less likely to be um, exposed to technology, but absolutely not. My father. Um, 
uh, FaceTimes his grandchildren. Uh, and with great, he, he's very comfortable with that because that's something which, which he uses in everyday life. So, so most hands in the room are still up at this point. And then I know I've got them because my final question is, keep your, I say, keep your hands up. If in your diary, you can find 10 minutes once every two weeks. Uh, anyone who takes their hand down at that point, I say, if you haven't got 10 spare minutes every two weeks, then, you know, you've got, you've, we've, there are bigger problems here than this, but, um, but, but in essence, this project needs, uh, uh, needs the tech, you know, I say to people, you've got the technology, you've got the training and you've got the time. Uh, it involves uh, smartphone technology, it involves video calls, uh, and it really requires 10, perhaps 15 minutes once every two weeks. Um, so what is it? Well, this is my class here. Um, I've been, uh, I actually put a, a note on my Facebook feed before Pharma Time was a thing. Pharma Time used to be called FaceTime of Pharma, before even FaceTime of Pharma was a thing. Uh, and I said, I don't suppose anybody would, anybody would be interested in having a video call with me on my farm uh, once every couple of weeks and we'll talk about what's happening on the farm. And, and there were hundreds and hundreds of responses. It was quite, it was quite remarkable. Um, and I settled on Miss Mella here on the left. Olivia Mella was fantastic. She was bright, passionate, keen. Uh, they had the technology. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, her class and I, uh, started off doing our FaceTime calls. Now, the form, it's very much left to the uh, the farmer and the teacher to make the arrangements. So it's, it, it's incredibly dovetailed to the curriculum and to the farming year. Um, but the format of our calls have been that I will perhaps drop Miss um, Mella a, a text message and I'll say, what are you studying at the moment? And she might say, air, evolution, genetics, water, poo, reproduction, textiles, maths, um, you name it. And I say, okay, right, well, we'll have our regular call. It's often 2.15 on a Friday afternoon. And I go somewhere on the farm that's, a, that's appropriate, that's relevant to what they've been, they've been studying, because it's, it's really important that we're linking into that curriculum. We're not just inflicting our own curriculum, but actually we're, we're, we're linking in and, and supporting those curriculum goals. Um, so my class, uh, they're all about 10 and 11 years old. They're all quite cheeky uh, and great fun. Um, but we've worked with ages from five, well, actually into tertiary education, because even in our colleges and universities, um, those same pressures that were on the left hand side of that earlier slide, you know, um, very little time, lots of risk assessments and hazards and that kind of thing. Um, that still applies in, in university and higher education. Um, and uh, and we now have rolled this out. Uh, there are now 500 farms in the UK who each have their own uh, class. Um, and we're now running in, uh, in five or six countries around the world. Um, the, I mentioned um, um, pupil confidence earlier on, uh, and it's fascinating how that changes because the, the one thing that, that really makes this different and really helps support that goal of helping people to really understand where their food comes from is that they get to know the farmer. So I've done one-off calls with classes all over. I've done various different one-off events and they're great, but they are a snapshot. Uh, but I know that my class and the 12 and a half thousand children who regularly uh, FaceTime or Skype their own farmer around the UK as part of farmer time, I, I know that they know a farmer. They, haven't know, they don't know of a farmer, they know him or her. Uh, and when we talk about pupil confidence, I know one of the things that I'm most heartened and encouraged by is that in later weeks, uh, I hear different names asking the questions. And so I know that they are the children who perhaps have been a bit more nervous, they're perhaps a bit more shy, lacking in confidence. Uh, and over a couple of weeks or a, a few calls, they think, well, actually, this is OK. Uh, and they build up the confidence to be asking their questions. And we really do get full, full class involvement. Um, we get 100% attention because they're, they're absolutely riveted and fascinated by the screen. And I can show them exactly what I want to show them. They're not distracted by a duck flying over the yard. They're not distracted by my, they are distracted by my dog, but I, I, can, I can manage that. Um, and the dog's more popular than I am, but you know, that's a, that's a, that's a minor frustration. Um, but, but we really do have 100% focus, 100% functionality, and 100% really flexibility to, to, to match to the curriculum. Um, it's gone beyond just um, just that, though. Uh, it's gone beyond what we what we'd originally imagined uh, in a number of ways. Um, so, so there I am. I'm, I'm in the yard. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about there, but as you see, you know, 100% uh, pupil attention, and and the teacher is is really the facilitator. He or she will uh, just just um, point the children out who are going to be asking the questions. I generally. Uh, again, it's very flexible, but I generally introduce my calls. Hi, guys, it's Farmer Tom here. Today I am 
standing on a heap of manure or in the sheep paddock or in my field of barley or whatever I might be and I tell them a little bit about it of course I know that that links directly to their curriculum curriculum so I know uh, what they're studying at the moment and, and how to link that um, but they then generally have some questions prepared and the first week we ever did it we were a bit nervous and we prepared loads of questions uh, really from week two onwards we the, the teacher prepared hardly any questions because the questions just come you can't stop them it's like trying to put you it's trying to hold back the tide it's um, it's absolutely amazing and there are normally more hands up at the end of the call for questions than there are at the beginning which I think uh, is a real um, uh, really demonstrates just the interactivity the engagement and the excitement that the children have um, and why is it better than we ever dared hope well uh, uh, in a number of ways you'll see on the um, on the right hand side there um, we have the farmer time call happening in the class and one of the we always have one of the children writing up things that we that we talk about for them to do further study uh, and you uh, if there are teachers on the on the call uh, you'll appreciate this but this is something I only learned in the last three to four years on this project is um, sometimes that very occasionally there are questions that I have no idea what the answer is I had one question how long does it take milk to get from the cow to the supermarket and uh, I think at the time I said um, oh, I don't really know I'll, I'll try and find out and I'll get back to you anyway I had a bit of a debrief with the teacher and she and I now I now respond to questions like that with uh, uh, as follows that's a fantastic question why don't you see if you can find the answer and we'll talk about it next time because within our education system as I'm learning um, pupil um, individual research is so so important so often if I'm not sure of an answer yesterday we were talking about uh, sheep and I knew they had more than one stomach but I couldn't remember how many so I said guys why don't you try and find out use the internet and try and find out how many stomachs a sheep has it's four by the way uh, because one of the pupils told me um, but so, so it, it not it's not only the farmer telling uh, it's the farmer sharing and actually it's the farmer um, I suppose just just stimulating that that interest to find out more so on the right hand side there you'll see the, the the girl writing down the things that we talk about and we've spoken about orchids and different types of bee and uh, farming systems and all kinds of things and if there's a word like vernalization that comes up or or whatever it might be immunization or, or a particular something they can study they write that down and they use that for further research so they dovetail that really back into 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 their classroom learning but even beyond that even even i think more exciting than that is is, is it's gone the, it's gone the whole circuit so on the left hand side there you can see the whiteboard this is not a farmer time call um but you you if you may or may not be able to see on the screen it says how might farmer tom use microorganisms on his farm here are some clues and there are some pictures and some words there and so actually when uh, when the children are, 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 are part, partaking in their regular studies, they are relating it back to the farm. They're not even, it's not even on the call. Um, it's come 360 uh, and, and they're able to use uh, us and the farm as an illustration for their, for their everyday learning. Um, I know some people are, are, are audio learners, some people are visual learners. And so those who are visual learners really need to see uh, to learn and, and and that's really really helpful so it's really is when it says bringing learning to life um, I, I think it's doing exactly that one of the other things actually before we just go on to the the internet the um, uh, website um, the support side of things one of the other things is is that we didn't think we'd be talking about is careers uh, and we, we have a bit of a crisis in farming at the moment uh, we have an aging population um, we, we are at the beginning of a digital revolution and yes we'll need farmers in 20 years time but actually we'll need software technicians programmers designers drone pilots uh, scientists uh, you know absolutely um, you know absolutely every, um, lots of different lots of different um, careers and there are huge opportunities in farming and that's one thing we've also started to do is to really get into careers as well and talk to the children about careers so it's um it's it's become saturated in and, and fully supporting the curriculum but it's also um covered careers as well um so as farmer time we have uh, at the moment we have three sponsors here in the uk uh, and they enable us to employ somebody part-time. We've, we've partnered with uh, an organization called LEAF, which is Linking Environment and Farming, who are fantastic. Uh, and through them, uh, we employ somebody to work part-time to support uh, our farmers and teachers. Now they do that in a number of ways, but as I said, it is, uh, it's an individual relationship between that farmer and the teacher and their class. So the farmer, and the, the, it's really only limited by the imagination of, of the, the farmer and the teacher. We, we've 
you know, we, we, we've covered subjects I never thought we'd cover. The other week I set my, my class a, a challenge. I said, we have a, um, a six hectare field and I need to sow some spring barley. I need to sow 300 seeds per square meter. How many seeds will I need for the entire field? So they're thinking 300 times 10,000 square meters in a hectare times six hectares. And they come up with a, with a, with a result. So we're, so we're into, we're into so many other subjects. We've spoken about history and, um, oh yeah, all, all kinds of topics. So it really is limited only by the imagination uh, of the of the farmer and the teacher. But the support that that we give centrally uh, really has a, a number of different facets. Um, one is um, we've we've done some basic training. You know, there's a few things we've learnt. Um, the audio connection is incredibly important. Uh, please film in landscape rather than portrait. There are a lot of tips and tricks and you'll see at the bottom of this slide here, um, we've put web a webinar together for teachers and we've put another one together for farmers. Um, just a 10 minute webinar uh, and that's uh, Miss Mellor. I've traveled down, I, I thought I'd never go to the class there, 200 miles away from me. Um, uh, but I went down there and we uh, and we recorded a webinar for farmers and teachers. And actually just touching on that, they're, they're 200 miles away. Um, oh no, sorry, I'll, I'll come on to that in a moment. Um, the other support we give really is is um, is just giving some ideas, um, and we share that via social media uh, and on our uh, on our central site. Because again, it it might be that um, that you know that, that our participants hadn't thought about bringing maths in, or they hadn't thought about uh, you know talking about uh, other subjects, or using it as an illustration for, for other topics. So um, so it, it's it's a, a lot of that is is supporting, helping, and encouraging. Uh, and then we do cover child protection as well here. The, the advantage of a virtual call is that um, really it comes under the child protection of the school, that there is never ever a one-to-one -one interaction between the farmer and any of the children in the class. The teacher is there at all times uh, and uh, it, it, it really makes the um, ensuring that our child protection is at is first rate um, a, a lot, lot easier. Uh, but we do have a child protection policy and we make sure that our our farmers um, uh, in particular but our teachers are, are generally covered by their own school policy but the, uh, that everyone's au fait with that and um, uh, and fully signed up as well so really it's coordination and of course we give our farmers and teachers um, once a year we say you know do you want to do you want to try another teacher another farmer um, or, or are you happy to continue do you want to continue with the same class as they move up to the next year group or do you want to continue with the same teacher and have a new class so we we give them lots of different options and actually as the um, uh, as the teacher signs up, we try to give them more options as well. Here in the UK, we have fish farmers, we have flower farmers, we have um, livestock farmers, arable farmers, horticulturalists, you know, all kinds of farmers signed up. And, and sometimes there's a particular interest in, um, in, a, in, a, in, a special, in a particular area of farming. Um, but, but generally, we, we, we allocate those relationships ourselves. And some farmers, you know, they say to me, Tom, I'm only a dairy farmer. So you know, I can only talk about dairy farming and I say to them, you know, you also farm the environment and that is such a key topic in, in our school curriculums. So whatever, you know, however um, one dimensional you might think your farming might be, uh, let me tell you differently. Um, and, uh, and the environment, climate and uh, air, water, soils, etc., is is a really key part of the curriculum. Um, so, uh, so, so there's, there's a lot of diversity there. And the other option we give our teachers, I went over to the island of Jersey in the English Channel and um, uh, we were looking to sign up all the schools in Jersey, which I think we're just about there. Um, and they said to me, fantastic, we would like to just sign up our classes with other farmers in Jersey. Uh, Jersey is an island eight miles long by five miles deep. And uh, I said, OK, well, that's, you know, it's, it's really down to you. But I said, let me let me tell you about the, the advantage. And again, this comes up in our curriculum a lot. The advantage of having farmers that are much further away. I said, my class are 200 miles away. That's only, I mean, that's only, uh, that's no distance in Australia. But for us, you can cross lots of ge geological zones and you're in a different climate altogether. Uh, and I said, my class being 200 miles away um, is a bonus rather than uh, a disadvantage because we compare the weather, we compare the soils. What's your soil like? Their soil is chalky, it's lighter, mine is clay and heavier and, and more grey. Um, you know, what can you see out of your window? What crops can you see being grown? So actually, it encourages them to interact with the world around them as well. So, so I, almost, I almost say, try and get a school that's as far away as possible and you can really compare and contrast and you can learn about the other things going on. Yes, of course, it's great to, it's great to link up with local farms, um, but the advantage can be going further afield. 
Um, I did mention we use social media a lot. Um, we have the hashtag farmer time uh, and that's a great way for farmers to share and, and classes to share what they're doing. Uh, we have to have a policy that covers that as well because obviously you, you can't share images of, of children without their permission. Um, uh, but it's a really, really good way to, 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 to give our ideas, um, to say, hey, this is what we're doing. And uh, other farmers and teachers can think, well, that's a good idea. I didn't think about that. Let's, um, let's use that. So that's, um, that's something that we, we, we do pretty heavily. And I would encourage anybody to, to follow the hashtag farmer time. We, we used to be called FaceTime Farmer, so you can look for that hashtag as well. There'll be a lot of examples on there. Um, but we got a, we got a, a very polite letter from uh, Apple suggesting that we ceased using the word FaceTime. Um, which um, uh, which we which we did. Um, so farmer time uh, is is uh, is the name, but you could also search the hashtag FaceTime a farmer. Uh, and as I say, I, I've touched on this already. We're, you know, geography is not a limiting factor. Uh, you know, internet connection, uh, mobile network is is a limiting factor for us. Um, but we, equally, we found ways around that. And sometimes, when in parts of in more remote parts of the UK. Um, we perhaps get a bit of signal drop or, or weather interferes with the signal and farmers in those in those situations will take questions from the children and record videos and, and email them back again via, via our home network and of course I, I do say to our farmers actually you are the attraction yes it's great for them to see lots lots of things going on around you but but you are you are the um, you know you, you're what fascinates our, our children our, our learners uh, and so don't don't be afraid to be at home like this uh, because you are a, a fantastic external external source of information so um so i do encourage them uh, even even where that internet connection may be uh, less reliable to um, to take part um oh yes yeah. so we've got we're, at the moment we're running in the uk in ireland sweden finland uh, and there you guys are down in australia uh, we're also running pilots in south africa and the usa um uh, and and really we there's no limit there's no limit. If you've got a smartphone, if you've made a video call, you can be part of this. Uh, I've mentioned a little bit on this already. Yes, we're definitely making a difference. People are, are, are understanding more about where their food, uh, their food comes from. And that is um, having a real benefit uh, to many, many things. Yes, it's dovetailing into the curriculum. That's fantastic. But it's also helping them to look closer at the environment around them, uh, which is really, really important and becoming increasingly so. Um, uh, one of the topics they look at here in the UK is, is, a, is our red tractor. That's our symbol of slightly higher uh, elevated uh, welfare and stewardship. Uh, and so they look into what that means and, and uh, how they can interact with their environment. Um, and ultimately that comes to health as well. Uh, and I would love not only to, you know, we did touch on, um, on employment within the industry. I would love to not only see some t um, first rate um, candidates coming forward to work in, in the food and farming industry, but actually, I think this can really impact on our on our nation's health as well. And 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 when we keep seeing headlines that we're on the cusp of a, oh, I don't know, a something crisis or a you know diabetes disaster, whatever it might be, uh, this is really really important to to be bringing our our our, our young people back to uh, closer to where their food comes from. There's just one thing missing. That's you, of course. Um, so there's lots of ways to get involved. Um, Luciana has been doing some great stuff down in Australia so I would encourage people to not only sign themselves up sign their children's classes up you know badger the teacher um, uh, and any friends that you may have that uh, are teachers and farmers as well uh, and really that is uh, that was a very slow elevator right it wasn't an elevator pitch it was a uh, it, it was a, a just a, a wander through um, what I think really is a wander which is uh, which is farmer time um, so we'll perhaps have a bit of time of discussion. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Hi. There we are. Oh. And a couple of people have sneaked into the room as well. Welcome. Um, I'm really happy to take, um, yeah, to take some questions. I don't know if anybody had any, any, any questions about that or any, any comments. Um, is this something that could work or, or couldn't work? Uh, One of the things I do do a bit of public speaking in it, and one of the most important things is being comfortable with silence. I am really comfortable with silence. I can wait a long time. So, <laughs> Dave, hi there. Hey, Tom. Can you just tell me which platforms you find is the most effective? Yeah, great question. So actually, what, when we talk about tips and tricks, one of the things that we absolutely ram home shamelessly to our farmers and teachers is do a test call. Uh, you know, get together with your IT manager if you're in a school, 
do a test call. Um, on my farm, for example, we found that FaceTime was okay, but Skype was much better. And, and one of the other things we've definitely learned, I touched briefly on it, is, um, and there's been a lot of research into this, if, uh, if you're watching something and, and the, 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 the picture's a little bit grainy, uh, uh, people generally, it still holds their concentration. If they're struggling to hear, you've lost their concentration in seconds. And so actually we, we really highlight audio is so important. Uh, a lot of farmers now have the little little bugs in their ears, um, but or, or even a little cheap muffler thing to stop the wind catching the microphone. But uh, it's really really important that we test calls. So for us, it's Skype. Um, you know, for you guys, it might be WhatsApp video, it might be FaceTime, it might be uh, another device. It could be Zoom. Uh, you know, um, uh, there are lots of different platforms, but we really emphasise testing and trialling it out. I don't know what the uh, uh, teachers on the call might tell me, but um, the attention span of a class when uh, things aren't quite going as they shouldn't, the children can't quite hear something or it's not quite working, I don't think is particularly long. So no, that test not. call is, uh, is all the more important. Hi, Lynn. Hello, Twice how are you? Two days. Oh, no, yeah, very good, thank you. Slightly jaded uh, this morning. Um, Tom and I worked together yesterday on a, a large um, campaign for young people to share their science. It was absolutely amazing. Did a live lesson um, first thing in the morning. But what I'm, I'm and actually I will plug that because if anyone in Australia wants to get involved, then it'd be absolutely fabulous to get you involved in the great science share. Um, we can talk about that maybe a bit later on. But Tom, service teachers. Or Lynn, I'm, is everybody else losing Lynn? No, uh, yes, uh, yes I did. Oh, hang on. Lynn, I've just lost you. Uh, right. Oh, okay. no, you're back again. Wait, oh. You're My back, back again, yep. If it keeps cutting out, you could switch your, your video off because your audio might come okay. through. Again. Yeah. Right, give it a try. All right, there we go. Let's try that. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yes. Loud and clear. Oh. Ah, no. no uh, Lynn, do you want to? Yeah. Do you want to? You're, you're in and out. Do you want to tap your question in the um, uh, in the chat? And while we do that, I'll just have a look at the other points. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, GJ, what is the reach in Australia at this point? I'll hand over to Luciano for that one. Um, so, PIFA is uh, in, uh, engaged with the uh, Farmer Time. So, uh, we're um, piloting it in a number of different industries. So, um, I know that uh, cotton and uh, forestry, and uh, we're, we're working on a, a model for horticulture as well. So, um, we're, we're sort of at the early stages. And uh, I guess it comes down to ironing out things like technology uh, and uh, because of the remote learning uh, situation with schools at the moment, that, that whole connection between classroom and producer is, uh, is more difficult in the, in, well, has been in the last, in, uh, last few months. Um, but uh, we'll be able to progress that in the next couple of months once uh, teachers uh, go through their uh, catch up process with kids being in a remote um, remote situation and, and uh, obviously lots lots of catching up to do. Um, and I guess also, Luciano, um, uh, sponsorship is pretty key as well. And, and if I just yeah. refer back to my ready fire aim point earlier, um, we've got people in, in various different territories um, across the world who, are, who, who have been interested and our view to them has been the same as in Australia is get get three farmers get three teachers doesn't matter where they are link them up and get them going mm -hmm. take the lessons from that and then work with sponsorship and try and build on it, it um we, we we've been i've been dealing with um someone in denmark and uh he's a, he's a great guy but he's desperately trying to find i need to find a sponsor and i need to get a structure and do i need to employ somebody and what's my policy on this i've said just get a pilot going mm -hmm. learn what you learn what you need to learn in denmark and then, and then you can go to your sponsors and say, or potential sponsors and say, hey guys, this is working now, 
let's make it 300 people rather than three, three or 3,000 instead of three. Um, and, and I think that's, that's, I think you're doing exactly the right thing. Um, you, you've, you've just got to work out what works for you, what your hitches are. We're piloting in the US at the moment and we're piloting both within the time, a time zone and we're piloting between time zones, which obviously they've got four. So they've, you know, if you're going mm. California to East Coast, uh, how does that, does that work? And, and how does exactly. that work? So it's, it's, it's you're, you're at the kind of end of the pilot stage now where you've got a, uh, a few examples, but uh, so at that point, then the other thing, the next thing hold, that holds you back is, is, is sponsorship. Um, Indeed. In terms of the adoption curve, uh, I thought, I'm really, I apologize to other farmers if there are any on the call. I apologize. Uh, I thought the farmers would be the most miserable and uh, uh, slow to sign up and reluctant. Well, what's this all about? Do you know, we were flooded with farmers flooded we, we we went from one in the first year which was me <laughs> to 70 uh we were oversubscribed but we had about 100 farmers and about 70 schools in the second year and it's only been in the fourth and fifth year when we're around you know between three and five hundred farmers that the number of teachers signing up has ticked over the number of farmers and we're now trying to get more more farmers on board so um it, it's it's also you know you've got to keep your right levels of, of, of farmers and teachers as well um um, We've uh, got so, so, oh, go on. Hi, Jenny. Hi. Um, so do all your programs um, run on a repeating basis or do you ever do one offs? That's a really, really good question. We, we have done some one offs um, and there are definitely benefits to it. That's fantastic. And in fact, when when um, PIFA started, um, it was it was just run on Ag Day. Um, and that was great. You know, there were there were some things that we we were able to help out with, and and uh, you know, there's some, definitely some some big big impacts. But I refer back to my earlier points on the relationship. Uh, and at the moment in the world, there are lots of people saying lots of things about food production and the environment and lots of kind of things. And and here in the UK, we we get you know we, sometimes as a farmer, I feel a bit like, gosh, there's so many people out there that are saying things that that aren't true, and I wish they could see my farm and. and and for me, the importance is a relationship. Uh, and actually within education, if children can later in life, if they hear somebody saying farmers are evil and they don't care about animals or whatever, whatever, you know, that's that's something I hear a lot. I want those children to be able to say, no, hang on, I no, well, I know farmer Tom. You know, or I know farmer, whoever it might be. Uh, and to and to analyze that information based on actually knowing a farmer rather than a one-off calls a, a know of, that they're not without value. But the relationship is 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 so so important. And equally, in in one in one ten minute call, I can share a fair bit of information. But I can't inspire a young person to get involved in my industry so so well as I can when they when they when they get to know me. So so yes, a one off call is great. Uh, but the, the the there is so much more value in that in that repeated um, um, repeated incidents. And and I think then the, as the farmers and teachers begin to understand how much the curriculum it that you can relate to um it, it that becomes quite simple that's wonderful and i agree i would love to set that up and i suppose the other question being a bit of a devil's advocate can you share some of the issues that you have had with some farmers you know not necessarily going to one of the chat questions not necessarily um knowing the curriculum that well and what's you know how to really address yeah. that level of, of the education with the students yes yeah, so, so, that, so that's a great point um uh, we so that and that kind of covers a couple of points, and I'll, and I'll we'll just broach both of those. Um, one is we have a code of conduct that our farmers and teachers sign up to. Uh, it involves language, it involves appearance, it involves you know all those other other things. Um, so that's really really important that we are all up to standard. Um, when you've got, I mean, this this call is very much a partnership. It's a partnership between the teacher within the classroom and, and the farmer. Now the farmer will know everything about their farm. Uh, everything it's amazing they're, they're, they're you know I think they realize doing these things how much they do know and the teacher his or her role is to know everything about their class and the curriculum and the interface is that the relationship between the teacher and the farmer is really really important and that's where that comes through so I, I actually have very little knowledge of the curriculum and when I did the great science share yesterday it was very helpful that they sent me through a list of terms that they often use like compare and analyze and you know all those kinds of things and so i had to learn up for that because i didn't know it before at all but actually the teacher when i when i email or text um olivia the teacher we're paired with um and she she will tell me what's in the curriculum that's that's her role in in our relationship 
And my role is then to put myself somewhere appropriate on the farm. If I need to Google how many different types of bee there are in the UK, I'll, I'll do that. Uh, there are 80 something, I've forgotten, but, um, uh, but, but actually the, 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 the role for the, the curriculum knowledge stays with the teacher. Um, so as a, as the farmer, you're not becoming the teacher, you're, you're becoming an external source of information. Um, there was a, a, another point on, um, on the chat. Um, GJ, who I think's left the call, um, but said, does the branding have to be the same? For example, if you wanted to employ the model, but you'd like to brand to something more locally, is that an issue? Um, for me, it's really important that we stay within farmer time. Um, for two reasons. One is, um, if, if there is one farmer teacher relationship that goes wrong, bad, something happens, uh, it can pull the whole thing down. Uh, oh, you know, this class did this and this happened or, uh, that, that, that is the weakness. Um, and so if there are people doing lots of their own, um, schemes in, in local areas, um, that, that can, you know can, co can cause problems because uh, on my second point um, we've we've learned a lot of things I've mentioned audio I've mentioned recording in landscape rather than portrait you know there are lots of things that we've learned as we've gone through this process um, and the, the, the value that we give to PIFA I mean otherwise Luciana would just flip me the V's and disappear off into the horizon and set up you know Skype a farmer Australia, but, right. but actually the value that I believe that we, that we give is, is that support. This is what we've learned. This is how we can help you. Um, we can also, as a, as, as farmer time, as a, as a, an organization now with a reasonable bit of income in the UK, we've started to link up, um, and be, and be supplied with some really, you know, great education resources from, from the big educa global education promoters. So, um, that, that's been really, really helpful as well. So, I, um, I would say really the branding, it, it's less about the branding it's more about doing this together and that's why we give the value you know the teachers in jersey in, on the island of jersey if they all wanted to sign up and they were adamant they wanted to sign up just with farmers in jersey i'd happily do that you know if you want one if there's one town and they all want farmers within the town great you know fantastic they're still signing up um and uh, and the value is still there and we can still support them and ensure that they've got they're, they're running a first-rate program and they've covered all the, all the topics. It's, it's, it's so flexible anyway. Um, uh, really, you're, all you're just doing is, is sitting under our umbrella, keeping out the, the rain of um, not having done this before. So, um, so I, would, I would say I would encourage people not to set up their own scheme, but actually to, to fall under Luciano's and, and allow us to support you uh, as you do that. Um, and I think, um, is uh, Lynn back with us? Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, <laughs> or I hope Excellent. I am. Although it's just said it's unstable again. Sorry, I'm. Right, you, 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 you pop. You've just got to. And my question is. <laughs> my question. It's not a question. It's. It's. I think it's a relevant point that that if this is extending into Australia or beyond, I think you underestimate the power that you have in terms of teach in service training. Um, our teachers will only get about thirteen hours, twenty hours max about science. In the whole of their initial teacher training year sometimes not observing teachers in their um, work placement who are actually teaching science because sometimes it's done by specialists so to be able to connect with tom in terms of a staff meeting in terms of teacher cpd without the children being there and to hear how they can contextualize the curriculum and the point of learning about rocks and soils at year, in year four for our eight and nine year olds he gives it that context he gives it that reality um, which for whatever reason they're not currently getting themselves that they're not inspired about science in that way they might not have a science background so it's a, it's a two-pronged thing you do wonderful things for children don't get me wrong but I think you're underestimating the power that you've got also with this program in terms of in-service teacher training yeah we, we spent a lot of time yesterday talking about soil and I never thought we, we would quite cover soil in such great detail although I'm a soil geek um, uh, you know, and I said, guys, go home and just smell the soil. I mean, it's so important to smell it as a farmer. I'm down there all the time giving it a good, you know, good sniff to see, see if it smells like healthy soil. So that's, that's really, really important. And one of the things, and this might be just directly for you, Luciano, actually, um, I spend a little bit of time now. So, so I still only have one class. It's really important that actually we grow by having more farmers and more teachers. It's not just mm -hmm. me being a super farmer and 
trying to do as much of this as I can because it shouldn't be taking much more than 10 to 15 minutes of people's time once a fortnight. Mm -hmm. um, but what I have started to do is to Skype into teacher training conferences. Uh, and so I'm demonstrating it. Hi guys, this is, I'm here on my farm, here's a sheep. Uh, by the way, when I look at that sheep, you know, we can talk about biology, we can talk about physiology, we can talk about reproduction, but also look, it's, it's got wool on it. We can talk about textiles. Look, it's grazing. We can talk about soils. We can talk about water, you know, so actually I, I Skype into, a, you know, every now and then into a teacher training conference, conference to, to demonstrate that as well. Because again, it's, it's about helping to fire um, the imagination of the teacher who perhaps won't have a really close understanding of farming to think, oh, wow, yeah. And I'll say, you know, we, we, we do a bit of maths as well and they convert square metres into, oh, wow, yeah, conversion of units, that's in our curriculum. Uh, and, and actually that's, that's a great way to, to kind of inspire and get people on board. It's, um, that's there's, there's a bit of JFDI, that's one of the kind of key management principles, which is just effing do it. And sometimes people, people need a bit of that, but, but actually if, if, they, if, they, if they don't respond to that, it's just a little bit of, you know, this is how, this is how it, could be, it could impact your classroom curriculum school whatever it might be that that's uh, that's a wonderful point you've made there tom in terms of uh, not only professional development but it, it is about mentoring teachers and uh taking them on that on that journey and uh once you begin that journey then then i guess they can take on board that uh idea of how to integrate food and fiber into the, into their curriculum but it's yeah. that mentoring that's really important now I'll just note that we've got about five minutes left um, if we're going to stick to our one hour. Um, so, uh, we're, Tom, we've got a question from David in the, uh, in the, in the chat area. Fantastic. I see that. So, uh, good day, David. Um, good to see you. It must be dark where you are. <laughs> I've got a uh, question. Is... <laughs> oh, and, and good work on your branding as well. Um, so, David, how can I say, years ago, I had a Skype call with David uh, because I was looking at, you know, could this work in other countries? And he's been incredibly encouraging um, right, right from the off. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to introduce Luciana and, and David because um, Grain Growers, I think, are a great organisation. We, um, when we're looking for sponsors, you know, we are looking for, um, yes, people who are going to give us cash, but we're also looking for people who give us access to those farmers. We have a sponsor called G's, who are a big hawk company, um, and they have, a, they have loads of growers. And so um, they've been a fantastic support in many ways to us. So the question, are you getting most take up from urban schools or rural schools or both? Do you know, it's fascinating. I do speak at quite a few farming conferences and the, and the, and the feedback is generally, Tom, wouldn't it be great to get, um, get farmers and we'll get link up with all those urban schools because they don't know anything about farming. And I say, let me tell you, there will be many children, and this is no disrespect, but there are many children in your local village school who will know nothing about where their food comes from. Exactly. And when you hear the statistics of the, number, the percentage of children who think avocados are laid by birds or that, you know, carrots take, I think one of the things was carrots take four to five years to grow. I think, you and, know. And, and that, yogurt, that, that, yogurt comes from a tree. Yeah, that's right. But that's in every school. And, and so, and so, Yes, there is interest in, in our urban schools, but there's interest in our, in our rural schools. And the facility of linking up to a farmer, reinforcing the curriculum and giving live examples is, you know, is, is, is for everyone. And as I say, we're, we're trialling it in, in tertiary education, you know, students 18 to 21, uh, you know, particularly within agriculture, but actually beyond that, um, uh, it, this is really important for them as well. One of the other things we're doing is, is some classes, as, the, as you get into secondary education, they go to different teachers for different classes, and it's difficult to, to perhaps link in multiple subjects as you, as you can more easily in primary. Uh, a number of teachers are starting to sign up in their tutorial, their morning tutorial period. So uh, schools may be different, but in the UK, you, you typically meet up, you have a, you know, um, a 15 minute session where you take the register and do whatever. And actually they're starting to do them there as well, because it's a good way of kind of reminding the kids of all the subjects they've been learning and how that links into, into food and farming as well. Any other questions? Thanks Randall for joining us. Thank you. Thank I'll you. Head off. Um, I, I just want, I just, if I could just take the opportunity to just to say um, one or two things. Um, um, uh, some of what you've been talking about and, and, and how you engage with uh, education is about empowering teachers, uh, not only empowering kids uh, and, and students about food and fibre, but empowering teachers to enable them to 
uh, take their students on that journey of food and fiber and the importance of where their food comes from. Out of all your experiences, which, which has been the most powerful in terms of, of empowering and, and providing uh, uh, leadership skills with the teachers that you've uh, worked with? Um, it's all amazing fun. Uh, it's, it's all powerful. And uh, I've, I've, you know, I've dialed into, uh, you know, dozens of teacher training conferences and I've never wasted my time. I think probably the two key highlights, uh, well, one highlight was I dialed into a teacher training conference recently and uh, uh, it's amazing because you can see them. They don't think you can. And often, you know, someone's yawning or something and I say, hang on a minute, what's happening there? But um, there was... Um, uh, there was a bit of a commotion and there was a, a question from the back or a comment from the back. I couldn't quite hear. And I realized that the teacher I'd been connecting with for the last four years was at that teacher training conference. And, uh, and so it was great for her to be able to see, you know, how, what the reach of this has, has been because she's just been Skyping from her classroom to my farm for, for four years. So that was, pro that's probably one of my, my high points. Um, but the other high point, and I'm not answering your question. I'm going to make up my own question and answer that. <laughs> um, it, because we mentioned the impact that this this has on children understanding where their food comes from. We mentioned the impact this has on careers as well, because the, they're, they're not only our future co consumers, they're our future workforce. But this is having an impact uh, with our politicians as well. And, and those children are our future decision makers too. And so we've started to hear, have this mentioned in Parliament. And when, uh, when, industry, uh, when industry leaders, political and uh, agricultural and educational are, are seeking to give examples, they're mentioning farmer time. And so in the House of Westminster, Palace of Westminster, this is, you know, this is, this is not everybody's au fait, but, but it's mentioned mm. frequently. So it's, it's got some real, real reach. So that's, that's, that's the power there. Excellent, excellent. Well, um, thank, thank you to everyone for, uh, for joining in tonight. And uh, very much, thank you very much, Tom, for, uh, sharing your inspiration and passion for, um, for what you do. And, and uh, it's been the most amazing uh, hour of, of uh, getting into your world and understanding uh, your journey and uh, especially to do with farmer time. And uh, you've been a, a, a true inspiration tonight. And uh, I really appreciate you taking your time to share that with us. And uh, and it's been uh, and it's been wonderful to have everyone on board to uh, to share in the experience. So um, thank you to everybody, and thank you especially to Tom. And I'm sure that uh, I'll be in touch with you very soon. So um, well, unless there's any other questions, do, do, if you want to if you want to hit me up on social media, I'm very happy to uh, to answer any further questions. Um, or you can go on to farmertime.org, the UK site, if you want to any questions on there, or connect with Luciano at PIFA. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. It's, it's easy to inspire people with such a simple and inspirational project. So yeah, just, just go for it. And I, I wish you all the best in Australia or, or wherever you are. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Tom. And thanks to everybody else for joining in tonight. Thank Brilliant. you. Take care. Bye-bye.